Babylon. Now this is the 16th hour of our series on Mystery Babylon. Many of you have already made the necessary connections. You know what's happening and you know who's bringing it about and you know why. Some of you still do not. So we will continue. Manly P. Hall wrote this. Quote, the serpent kings, and notice that Mr. Hall capitalized the two words as one would do for a deity or for royalty when he wrote this, reigned over the earth. The serpent kings reigned over the earth. It was these serpent kings who founded the mystery schools, which later appeared as the Egyptian and Brahmin mysteries. The serpent was their symbol. They were the true sons of light, and from them have descended a long line of adepts and initiates duly tried and proven according to the law, unquote. And the proper term is not Freemason. It's free Messan. It comes from the French, from the Knights Templar, and it literally means the sons of light. Another writer, Wilfred Gregson, informed his readers why Mr. Hall capitalized the two words serpent kings when he wrote, quote, One symbol of great prominence throughout all ancient civilizations is the snake or serpent, where it has symbolized divine wisdom, unquote. So Mr. Hall had reason to capitalize the words because he had discovered that the serpent represented divinity, Notice also, folks, that Mr. Gregson, even though he chose not to capitalize the word serpent, confirmed that Mr. Hall's use of the capital letter was correct when he stated that there was a connection between divine wisdom and the serpent. Mr. Hall, a 33rd degree mason, made the same connection in these comments. Quote, the serpent is true to the principles of wisdom, for it tempts man to the knowledge of himself. Unquote. A serpent is often used by the ancients to symbolize wisdom. The symbol of the serpent has another concealed truth, according to Kenneth Mackenzie, for he identified that truth in this quote when he described a brazen serpent. Quote, it was a type of mediator and a promise of redemption. Unquote. The word brazen, folks, is defined as bold or impudent. And impudent is defined as shamelessly bold or disrespectful. Now you will remember that Lucifer was an anointed cherub in heaven who fell because he sought godly power. The story is covered in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14 of the Old Testament. Look it up. It says this, quote, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High, unquote. Therefore, it can be safely said that Lucifer would be considered to be shamelessly bold and, of course, disrespectful. It appears that the brazen serpent could be Lucifer. Another author, John Anthony West, wrote a book entitled Serpent in the Sky, in which he also connected the serpent with wisdom, and he wrote this, quote, The serpent represents intellect, the faculty by which man discriminates. There is a higher and a lower intellect. Thus, symbolically, there is a serpent that crawls, and the higher intellect, that which allows man to know God, the heavenly serpent, the serpent in the sky." Unquote. The somewhat veiled worship of this serpent in the sky inside the Masonic lodges was alluded to by another Masonic writer, Kenneth Mackenzie. For in his book entitled The Royal Masonic Cyclopedia, he wrote this, quote, Among the charges preferred against the Order of Knights Templar for which Jacques de Molay suffered martyrdom was that of worshipping an idol or image called Baphomet. It has been suggested that Baphomet is none other than the Ancient of Days or Creator. 
More cannot be said here without improperly revealing what we, meaning the Masons, are bound to heal, conceal, and never reveal. Unquote. So according to this Mason, the snake or serpent is somehow a symbol of the subject of the Masonic worship, and apparently this fact is the secret that the Masons cannot reveal to the rest of the world. A Christian minister, Reverend Alexander Hislop, wrote a book that included some discussion on the subject of serpent worship. And in that book, entitled Two Babylons, he explained that serpent worship was not something that is recent in time. It was an ancient practice. Quote, Along with the sun, this symbol will be discussed later as the great fire god, and in due time identified with him, was the serpent worshipped. In the mythology of the primitive world, the serpent is universally the symbol of the sun as the sun was the great enlightener of the physical world, so the serpent was held to have been the great enlightener of the spiritual by giving mankind the knowledge of good and evil, unquote. And according to the Bible, you know who gave man the knowledge of good and evil? Satan, Lucifer. He then discussed a coin minted in Tyre, the center of the ancient Phoenician culture. This coin was also the subject of an article in the September 1986 issue of the Good News magazine. It depicted a serpent entwined around a tree stump. To the left of the stump stood an empty cornucopia, and to the right a flourishing palm tree. The snake on the coin is the symbol of the powerful god whom the Romans called Escolapius. The name means the man instructing snake or the snake that instructs man. And the article then reported, quote, in mythology, Esculapius was believed to be the child of the sun and thus the enlightener of mankind. As the legend goes, Esculapius was ultimately struck down by a thunderbolt thrown by an angry Zeus, king of the gods, and cast into the underworld. Unquote. The tree stump, folks, represented the fallen god and his ruined kingdom. In the mythologies of many ancient civilizations, the image of a fallen tree was used to symbolize the cutting off of a great god or hero, someone cut off in the midst of their power. You see, the snake on the coin was shown twisting itself around the dead stump, exerting its power in an attempt to restore his fallen kingdom. The cornucopia is an ancient symbol of plenty, but it was empty on the coin. This has been interpreted as meaning that the abundance had been cut off because the great God has been cut off. However, folks, the implication is that the horn of plenty will return when the fallen God is restored to his rightful position. The palm tree shown in the coin is a well-known symbol of victory. So it appears that the coin was minted to depict the anticipated return of the fallen snake god to the world. And the Bible talks about a fallen serpent in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. However, in this case, folks, the snake is connected to another symbol of the serpent, a great dragon. Quote, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, unquote. Is the serpent worshipped in the ancient mysteries and a symbol in the Masonic ceremonies, a symbol of Satan, the devil? As has already been discussed, there is indeed evidence, folks, that this is the case. And once you have confronted the evidence and studied as much as I have studied, you will know that they are one and the same. 